Man, oh man, the last 24 or so hours have been dark times indeed for Helldivers, as yesterday's patch 103 has completely cracked the game wide open, leaving us with more questions than answers. And since yesterday afternoon, we haven't seen a single update, not even a whisper from the team over at Arrowhead. Welcome to the channel. This is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbear, and you know I absolutely adore playing Helldivers when it's working. And with that in mind, I wanted to give you some of my unscripted thoughts on it all, skimming over what has happened, what's happened since, and some future possibilities, hopefully sooner than later. Remember to hit subscribe and ring that notifications bell to receive my daily upload alerts, and let's check out what's been going down with Helldivers. Okay, we're going to check out everything that happened after yesterday's patch went live in just a moment. And I wanted to let you know I've included links to my reference sources, and of course chapters are available, to give you options and the ability to jump around to different areas of the video. Now, amidst all of that patch chaos, we do have a new Superstore reset to check out, starting off with the FS38 Eradicator Body Armor, which is in the lightweight category, and it includes the Fortified Passive Talent, which we've been seeing a lot lately, right? 30% reduced recoil and 50% explosive damage resistance. Next up are, of course, the two helmets. You've got the B-27 Fortified Commando Helmet, along with the FS-38 Eradicator Helmet, which looks just like the Star Wars Scout Trooper Helmets. And both of these will, of course, not grant you any buffs or perks. But you know what will? The B-27 Fortified Commando Body Armor, because you're looking at the beefiest armor values currently available in the game, and of course, this is a heavy armor set along with the extra padding talent for even higher armor ratings. But remember that you're going to be giving up overall foot speed and stamina regen, both of which are extremely important when you're attempting to avoid swarms of enemies. Checking in on today's daily, that is if you're actually going to try to log in and play, and we have an easy 15 medals up for grabs for killing 10 enemies with the EAT or expendable anti-tank, which by the way is a one-shot kill to the head of chargers. Now over to the major order and yeah, there's no way we're going to complete this one in time, especially after yesterday's chaos and it's actually continuing into today. But the update is we've taken Astanu and have nearly knocked out Fori Prime, leaving us Hellmire. Nivel 43 and Zagon Prime in just under 24 hours. And all of this major order is now in chaos, which I will get into in a moment. But this one was always going to be an extreme challenge to complete. Five planets in three days in the middle of the week, not the weekend, when we would have had the most Helldivers logged on. Yeah, that's a really tough ask and certainly our most challenging major order yet. But after the patch went live, I think any chance of completing this one legit has now been lost. This naturally leads us over to yesterday's afternoon update from Baskinator in the official Helldivers Discord, essentially saying that the team was aware of an issue with the Galactic War not tracking our progress and that they were looking into that issue. Now, I was monitoring that progress throughout the course of yesterday, and despite having over 100,000 divers all hitting 4 Prime, we seem to have been losing ground, so clearly that was bugged after yesterday's patch. But I did check it out this morning while testing some crash theories, more on that one in a moment, and it now looks like our progress is again registered correctly, and we have nearly taken 4 Prime. However, I do want to stress this is just me saying this. We have no official statement from Arrowhead either in their Discord or Twitter confirming that the board is now green and we are good to go, which is definitely out of the norm with this group of devs, right? As they like to stay in constant communication with the player base, but, and I can't confirm this one either, it almost feels like a directive has been handed down by Johan, Arrowhead's CEO, to stay completely silent until either they have a fix or definitive facts to pass along. Of course, the major issue is the game's current state of stability, or should I say, instability, which is maybe not as bad as when Helldivers first launched, as we had all those server cap disconnect issues, but let's just be honest here that right now it's a close second place to those launch issues. And 
I'm not here to dunk on the game. I'm now over 100 hours into Helldivers and still eager to get in more playtime. And it's been a long time since a new game has grabbed a hold of me like this one has. But yeah, it hurts when you drop in, you terrorize a mission for 20 to 30 minutes and then hard crash losing all your progress. And post-patch, the kind of crashes I'm seeing are the worst kind, which are those that don't even deposit you back on the ship or maybe just close the game for you. These are the kind of crashes that require a dashboard kill because the game just freezes and you have zero control of your PC. So before we dive into it all and take a look at what the crashing culprit might be, again, no absolute proof here, let's actually take the time to check out what the patch did right, starting off with those environmental hazards. Now, I think we all like seeing these things pop off. I mean, they're super immersive. And for me, I love the fact that I can now see where those damn meteor strikes are going to hit. You know, I've spoken about that one many times in the past, but... I also think that we as a player base were getting just a bit burnt out on how frequently those effects would trigger, especially when they would just come raining down on top of us while we were involved in a wild firefight with a huge mob. So that one was a W for the studio and how they just tuned them down a smidge. By the way, that's a technical term right there. Mechs got some love as well. I tested it out yesterday and the insta-death while turning and firing a rocket issues did not seem to show up for me, but we've also seen clips posted that it still randomly is happening. Now though, while just walking in a straight line and firing. So that one looks like it needs a bit more time in the oven before it is completely sorted out. Let's give that mech change a toss up for now. They work, but have intermittent issues as well. Probably the biggest W from yesterday, and it's not listed anywhere here in these patch notes, was the full-blown introduction, albeit via a shadow drop, of the Terminid's newest killer, the Shriekers. Now, we've been seeing them pop up from time to time, all denied by Johan, which is awesome to see as it just adds to the mystery, but that veil of shadows has now been lifted, and these things are in the game. They are numerous, and they are nasty. And big emphasis on nasty. They've got those spore tower-esque structures you need to destroy, but when you bring down their full wrath, it's like a swarm of giant pissed off wasps. I mean, they just come from everywhere and the damage they can lay down on us is crazy with one shot kills happening a lot. Seriously, this has added a whole new dimension to taking on the Terminids and we've got swarms now on the ground and in the air which, yeah, I love to see. It creates even more chaos, but these buggers are badasses and can be tough to deal with. All I can say is that I've developed a whole new level of appreciation for those sentry turrets, which have now become AA guns to deal with these things. Also, we need to throw another big W out there for the patrol insta spawn onto our head issues. Since yesterday's patch, I haven't run into that problem of taking on a bunch of baddies only to have an entire patrol materialize out of thin air just over me and then drop down and surround me and my squad. It was crazy to see, especially the first few times it happened, but it always seemed to begin just as you were in the thick of an intense firefight and it became downright annoying. But again, at least for me, the patrol spawns are now fixed. Oh, I also forgot to mention this, that I ran into this article from N4G.com charting out the best sentries to use in the game from the goaded S-tier autocannon down to what they call C-tier, the machine gun. Link to this one can be found in the video description in case you want to check it out for yourselves. Although, now with the Shriekers fully introduced into the game, this list may need just a bit of tweaking. I did a bit of testing with them all yesterday and found that the auto cannon was not netting me the best results when dealing with a swarm of these terminated flyers because the Gatling was really shredding them up. Results may vary. Let me know what sentry you found most effective at dealing with these flyers. Yeah, overall some good changes were actually installed into the game yesterday. But I did say we were going to be taking a look at the other side of things and the 500 pound gorilla still in the room are those damn persistent crash issues. Now, late yesterday afternoon, so we were well into the darkness of yesterday's patch issues, we got our last official post via the Discord, this time from Twinbeard, and he basically said what we already knew that they were seeing a ton of crashes, that they were thought to be linked to the patch going live, and that they were busy working on those issues. 
Now, instead of relying solely on Reddit or Discord DMs, by the way, shameless plug for you to stop right now, go down to the video description and hit that open invite link to join our awesome Helldivers community with LFG channels and voice rooms. It's free and super easy to use. So click that link as we're now up over 6,000 members. Anyways, back to it. And I did that all in one breath. Whew. I tested this patch out for myself quite a bit yesterday and this morning, and my overall thoughts would be that the game currently is foobar, at least for right now. Now, the problem is that I can't, with 100% accuracy, actually nail down what the single offending change was. I've seen a lot of players getting on board with this theory that the arc thrower is the major culprit, and how that change to now recording shots fired and shots landed is leading to 100% plus accuracy ratings, and that that's leading to the game just saying, F this, I'm out, and it just hard crashes. But here's the thing. I was seeing crashes three out of every five missions post-patch yesterday, even without a player rocking the arc thrower. But I will say that the point at which the game was crashing varied by quite a bit based on someone using that stratagem. Without it, if we crashed, it was somewhere between 20 to 30 minutes into a mission, which really sucked because we were right at the end and headed to extraction. Again, testing the crash theory with the arc thrower, I saw crashes at the 10 to 15 minute mark, which happened with this footage you're actually watching right now. And I had actually swapped over to the breaker to do some CQC work, so I wasn't even firing the arc thrower at the time of this crash. I guess as I start to wrap this thing up, the thing is Helldivers, or any game for that matter, only has a few golden opportunities to really bounce back from big stability issues like this one before it starts to shed players who just move on. Helldivers is still relatively new, and I'm confident it's going to weather the storm. I mean, just look at the Steam charts from this morning, despite all the current stability issues, as it's still in the top 10 for current player counts. but. On the flip side, Arrowhead needs to get a handle on these crashes and stability issues, and they need to do so in short order, especially now that we're finally starting to get some use out of those friendless mechanics. We've got Shriekers, we've got Major Orders, the Illuminate are on the horizon, and we know from all those leaked images that the Automatons are going full assault mode on the Helldivers with brand new behemoths. I'm going to throw in some breaking news right now. I actually stopped today's YouTube upload at 97% because this is really important that I include it in today's video. It's an official statement from Baskinator over on the Helldivers Discord, and I'm just going to read it to you verbatim. It says, we have identified the cause of the freezes many players have been experiencing, and we're in the process of building a patch to fix it that should be ready to deploy early next week. So hear that out again. It's not ready yet early next week but in the meantime they advise us against using the arc thrower the arc shotgun and tesla tower as those appear to be linked to the issue they say thank you for your continued patience so there we go stay away from those three arc uh weapon archetypes the arc thrower the arc shotgun and of course that tesla tower those seem to be linked to our crashing issues i'm going to test this out and this is good news if it is now, as new updates become available from the dev team, expect quick follow-up reports, and I'll also post those in my YouTube channel's community tab just to keep you all in the know. Please take a few seconds to hit subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell or you could miss my latest upload. All my socials can be found down in the video description. You've also heard me plug our awesome Helldivers Discord community, but again, that open invite link is found down in the video description as well. Sometime overnight, the channel eclipsed 211,000 subscribers, and I appreciate each and every one of you for sticking with me and tuning in for daily content. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.